Hello, I'm Spaghetti, and I'm gonna talk about D&D stuff. More specifically, D&D stories, okay? Why don't you subscribe? Why don't you do that? And also, if you if you like videos like this, why don't you go check out Thread Thrasher? Should be in a link below. In a link below. Okay? You enjoy. Okay, so this comes from my fourth D&D game ever, with the preceding three all being miserable failures. The game was being run by my good friend and relatively new DM at the time, with me and one other player, also a close friend of mine. We were playing in 3.5 as a sacrilegious wizard trying to ascend to godhood, me, and a rogue essentially looking for the one ring, friend. The game was kind of a shit show from the start. Our party composition, the inexperience of our DM, and some really crazy rules decision making led to some wild early encounters and fuckery. But the pinnacle came in the capital city of our DM's mage faction. I end up imprisoned by the mages for being a rogue wizard, and my buddy bails on me because he didn't want to deal with no fancy spellcasters. So for a good third of the session, I'm sitting in a cell desperately concocting an escape plan without my spellbook, and the rogue is running around having adventures with the local thieves guild. Eventually I convince the mages I want to join them and paralyze my chaperone, and he double crosses the thieves guild after they hire him to steal some scrolls or some shit from the mages tower, and we run into each other in a hallway in the tower. We get railroaded to this big spooky door with a serpent over it that the DM is trying to force us into. I roll arcane knowledge on the symbol, Crit, ancient deity of deception and traps. Fuck that. Rogue rolls to find another door, Crits, secret door. Rolls to detect traps, Crits, there's a trap. Fuck that door too. He rolls to find another hidden door, Crits again. DM is visibly angry, finally gives us a third door, leading to a hidden treasury, forgets we have a bag of holding. We fill up on loot and hear guards outside. They think there's someone in the treasury and say they're gonna activate the sterilizer. Fuck this shit. We kick open the door and throw the guards into the room, sterilize it, fire everywhere. Guards are on our tail now. We get cornered at a window ten stories up. Well gents, this is where it ends. Rogue tells me to hold my breath and get in the bag. I do exactly that. Turns out he's got a ring of feather fall. We land in the lake and he's got five minutes to swim to shore and dump me out before I die. We make it with seconds to spare. But, oh shit, there's a big Eye of Sauron looking motherfucker up on the top of the tower looking for us now. I find out it's abducting anyone who's got a magical aura on them. I have an ancient necromatic tome in my bag. Ah shit. Rogue gets chased away by a barbarian whose wife was defiled by the rogue earlier in the session. I'm left on my own. I almost make it to the gates of the city when the Eye comes within a couple feet of me so I cast greater invisibility on a random pedestrian and run to the gate. The eye picks up the pedestrian and I meet the rogue in the woods a day later. His bag is filled with hundreds of thousands of gold and magical items and treasure. We KO the big bad two sessions later with our arsenal of god items. Yeah, seriously. Rolling a nat 20 on a perception, knowledge, or similar skill check does not alter the world around you. It allows you to see the world better for how it is. I look for another door, I get a nat 20 on my perception. Here's my modifier. Congratulations, you are now certain that there is no third door because you've looked everywhere. I held a one shot where these goblins, maybe it was kobolds, had kidnapped someone in town and were performing a ritual to empower their bugbear leader. In an attempt to get them to open the door, one of the players rolled a nat 20 on a performance check. It didn't really do anything because they'd already engaged in combat with these creatures and the bugbear then retreated to the room to barricade the door so they couldn't get in. And this was after a number of utterly failed diplomacy, intimidate, and strength checks. They know you're trying to stop them and will try to kill them if you get in. You've insulted, injured, and threatened them. You playing a song on your lute, even if it's a pretty good one, is not going to make them suddenly ignore all that. If you were at a bar, you'd have made fistfuls of copper and silver and had your drinks and meal paid for, and maybe even the proprietor would comp your room. It's not going to make a hostile creature you've been antagonizing for a while suddenly have a change of heart and I was trying to teach the players, rolling random dice and making checks until hopefully the dice agrees with you isn't going to solve your problems. I won't let you brute force RNG your way through a game by making different checks until you crit. Posted a long time ago, but one of my better stories in general, and one of the ones I like to tell to get people into D&D. So this was one of the first D&D campaigns I'd ever played in, and in particular there are two things you need to know about the situation. One, my DM was a dick in regards to combat. He'd give us things that are just a bit much for what we were equipped for. Our first fight consisted of two trolls one-shotting two party members, and then passing off pouring potions down each other's throats in a bid to not die. 2. In order to combat this, he had given us some magical items. 
and I was given a sword that, on double critical confirms, as in roll two 20s on a d20 in a row, would absorb the souls of whatever I had killed and add their damage to my damage rolls. No way this would go wrong, right? So we're going to this dark island, where things are like animated movie evil. The sky around it was always stormy, etc. And we of course have to take a boat there. Along the way, we, surprise surprise, are ambushed. What we didn't expect was that it was going to be a fucking leviathan. We were not equipped to handle a leviathan. Most of us were sword wielders. We had no magicians, and our only archer was underleveled. So after we had all tried, and failed, to hit the thing, we had to resort to desperate measures. I checked my bags for anything. Anything that would help, and was suddenly struck by an idea. I had a well of many worlds. For those of you who are unfamiliar to D&D, a well of many worlds is a type of portal device that sends things to a random dimension. This, for all intents and purposes, is more or less a joke item, as not knowing where your thing will go. It can't really be used to set up any dramatic plans. What it is good for, though, is getting things out of your face. So I climbed up towards the bow of the ship while on my arm back, and through. The Well of Many Worlds expanded, spinning in the air like a ridiculous armband of God, getting larger and larger until finally it struck the Leviathan. And then poof, our problem was gone. The issue was, the Well of Many Worlds doesn't just get rid of things. Like I said before, it moves things to a different dimension. The dimension the Leviathan had decided to make its new home, seawater and all, just happened to be Asmodeus's lair. Asmodeus, in the D&D world, is the equivalent of Satan in a fairly loose way. He's the ruler of the Nine Hells and the head of the Devil Army, his lieutenants including other names for Satan, Beelzebub and Mephistopheles being examples. Generally not someone you wanted to fuck with, except at this moment. It seemed Asmodeus had found it somewhere in his heart to love another being. He stood ready to say his vows and consummate his marriage to this woman. And in this exact moment, the Leviathan had decided to appear, seawater and all, just above the place of his wife. So we were all high-fiving each other for getting rid of this Leviathan. A fairly impressive plan as far as we were concerned. When BAM! Out of nowhere, Mephistopheles appears next to the boat in a fan of flames. The conversation was short, and the effect of, What the fuck have you done? And it wasn't our fault. And basically, it was decided that in penance for our grievous error, we had to die and spend all of eternity in anguish in the Nine Hells. The problem was, due to a particular magical ability, when it came to combat, I had the ability to always go first. Remember what I told you about the Soul Stealer Sword? That whenever I double crit, which did obscene damage, like times four or some shit, under the rules we were playing, I would steal their abilities? How many dice of damage do you think a Lord of Hell has? So... After that happened, to the pursed lips look of my DM, I began to jot down the dice of damage on my character sheet as the boat moved on, now confident that anything I hit was gonna fucking die. Asmodeus apparently forgot about us when we went to the top of the tower on the island, where evil shadow monks were running the damn place. Of course, the only person who would make sense running such an organization would be Akuma from Street Fighter. So, as we exchanged monologues and readied for him to wipe us each in one blow, I readied my sword, and then rolled two 20s in a row. With all of my newfound abilities, I had a fairly dramatic jump in power. Times that damage by four, and suddenly we were talking some serious damage. Normally damage for characters around our level was somewhere in the 30s and 40s range. I hit him for 6,000. So now, after acquiring a Lord of Hell and Akuma in the same day, I was feeling pretty good about myself. That is... Until my DM told me that the evil force was too strong and I needed to roll a willpower save. That was fine. I thought, I've been rolling 20s all day. How bad could it be? I rolled a 1. So Akuma, the most dominant personality as it hadn't quite been eroded yet, took over my body, and with his newfound powers, began to go and take the other's god's powers, destroying the universe as we knew it. And that was the story of how my DM really fucked up. This comes from the group I DM for. More often than not, though, everyone's tried their hand at DMing as time goes on. This particular run was in 3rd edition and was a run of fun, where some things were rather ridiculous. Most ridiculous was that the Dwarven Paladin, our group's best role player by far, had gone on a long and arduous quest for his god. In exchange, he was granted some measure of divinity, including large wings. So we now have a dwarf in heavy armor who can fly. He quickly figures out that gravity and a dwarf covered in metal are the best weapons around and proceeds to essentially cannonball from the air to the next encounter, crushing a lowly bandit into a meaty paste. Too much cheer from the group and terror from the bandits. The one that sticks out in my mind most, because it happened so recently, was with a gnome cleric of Kord. 
I've been DMing this year and a half long campaign in which we've made many jokes about the priesthood of Kord being like a gym. Doing such things as calling Kord's temples the Iron Church of Kord and having a pair of NPCs who acted like haunted fronds from the old Saturday Night Live skits. I even gave the entire party a point of inspiration when they spent the night at an Iron Church of Kord, and every party member opted to join the clergy in their nightly worship, which was an hour-long workout with hymns. Well. In the final session of our campaign, the players needed to beseech the gods directly for information. The gnome, Glim Toggle, of course, wanted to go to Kord for aid. The ritual to do so was successful, and an avatar of Kord appeared before them, heavily muscled in tight-fitting shorts, bare-chested and wearing a wrestling mask. He was a luchador of Kord, and he said to the party, Oh yeah, Glim Toggle. You face before you a challenge the likes of which you have never seen. You step into dangers greater than any you have faced before. But you go with the might of Kord. Oh yeah. The player characters needed to find a hospital to talk to a doctor about a specific method of healing magic, but they were new in the city and didn't know where one was. So the rogue, a teenage female changeling, decided to ask the shopkeeper of the shop they were in where the closest one was, but for some reason, she then rolled bluff, which she crit failed with a one. The shopkeeper saw through her ruse and yelled, You don't need a hospital. You're not wounded, you damn dirty liar. Get out of my shop. The fighter, a large male minotaur, realized that this was going nowhere and used a goring charge on the rogue. Upon seeing a huge minotaur horn burst through the chest of the young lass, the male eladrin wizard saw where it was going and wanted to help. So in addition to the excess amounts of blood flowing from the girl's gaping wound, there was also blood being summoned upon her. After witnessing all this, the shopkeeper changed his mind and informed them where the hospital was. Now, it should be noted that the minotaur had recently, accidentally ingested about 4 kilograms of gold coins coins which his stomach didn't appreciate, and decided to occasionally expel. So, out of the shop sprints the Minotaur, limp teenage girl hanging from his horns, thinking he's now an ambulance screaming, wee haw, wee haw, wee haw, between coin vomits, blood flying everywhere, the wizard chasing behind waving his wand, splashing even more blood over them, and the street. She lived, and they got first-hand experience with that healing magic they wanted to ask about. So, everything turned out well in the end. We played a one-off session with no rule book around, so everyone got to choose three proficiencies. I knew it wouldn't be a long campaign and that these things usually start in a pub, so I took a proficiency in holding alcohol. We soon got into a drunken brawl that led to the halfling being knocked unconscious and the wizard lighting the pub on fire. I sprinted through the burning building to grab my beer, and then used my holding alcohol proficiency to carry the halfling, my pike, and my beer to safety. So this one time, my character and another character got into a fight. It didn't last long. We were level 16 or so, and I had dealt a grand total of 3 to the other character. So the fight ends and we continue onward, turning a corner into a cavern containing none other than an 18-headed pyrohydra. I immediately activated my ring of blink, and at the start of the fight, the lizard fucker let out a nice old blast of fire. Our party consisted of 8 characters, including NPCs, and the fire killed half the party, knocking two of the characters unconscious. Now, I should mention... I was playing a rogue, who had the effect of blink cast on her. I was in no worry. I could roll a 1 on the reflex save and not take damage. But here's the real kicker. That other character, had he not taken 3 damage, would have still been alive. Okay, it's not great. I play with boring fucks, but I like the story. Ran a long-running 3.5e campaign once that ran from level 1 to, I think, level 15. And let's just say that there were a lot of chaotic neutral members in that party. The early levels were all your typical adventurers on quests into dungeons, fighting monsters, and role-playing in cities. Once they hit level 12, they started abusing their new spells and abilities to rob places and kill people instead of role-playing, doing anything they could to get their hands on magic items. 3.5e kind of goes wonky after level 15, so I was planning to end the campaign but I hatched a plan to teach them a lesson at the same time. I had them hear a rumor about a temple that contained an artifact which could control time, and naturally they wanted it. The party eventually found the temple and discovered that there's another party of adventurers already there looking for the artifact. I described the temple and all of the other party members in detail, what they looked like and what equipment they had, but the players just wanted to get the artifact. The game became a race through obstacles and monsters to get to the chamber with the artifact first, the other party being only level 10 but having 
a significant head start. The players eventually found the room with the artifact sitting on a huge pillar, and the other party was already there fighting a necromancer and his minions. The players made short work of the necromancer, and then as I expected, they proceeded to kill and loot the other adventuring party. This is where my lesson came in. The player wizard killed the other party's wizard with one spell. The artifact in the center of the room hummed, and the player wizard vanished. The rogue sneak attacked the other party's cleric and killed them, and the party's cleric vanished. They guessed that the artifact must be teleporting them away to ensure it's a fair fight. It wasn't until the fight was over that they figured out that they had just killed themselves in the past. See, I wrote my own adventures and kept extensive notes, so I picked an adventure from the party's past before they got power mad. They had come to a temple at level 10 to fight an evil necromancer and save a village, but that was two, three real life months ago, so they had all forgotten. I read out the player's own descriptions of their characters and equipment from before they hit level 12 and started stealing items and getting geared to the teeth. I even said that the temple and other party members seemed familiar, but nobody pursued it. Too long did not read. Party started to get evil, so I sent them on a quest to find an artifact that can control time. They find other adventurers there and kill them, and the party vanishes. Turns out they killed themselves in the past from a previous quest to the same place. Lesson learned. So, what are some interesting D&D stories you guys have? Why don't you let us know in them comments? And if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you leave a like and subscribe? Um, if you'd like to see more videos similar to this one, why don't you go check out Thread Thrasher? Should be in the link below. Now let's see. Pick one good story I have. Well, it's not really good, but uh, kind of entertaining, I guess. Um, this was years ago, uh, one of my first D&D groups. So our group was fighting against some hill giants. It was either giants or ogres, but either way, our group's tank was basically bleeding out. He was on the floor, and my character was a rogue, uh, so all I did was, first thing I did was, I ran up to his character and tried to pull out a health potion as fast as I could. The only problem was, I was sifting through it so fast, apparently, that I wasn't actually looking to see what I was getting. I ended up throwing alchemist fire at my friend's face. Uh, I ended up burning half of his face or something. Yeah. He, he he looks cooler now, his character, or his character did. So, man, well, it wasn't it, it wasn't all bad. Yeah. But anyway, uh thank you guys for watching and uh hope I see y'all later. Have a good one. Peace.